Oh, hello there, and welcome back to a brand new episode of The Consulog. This is episode 28. Any coincidence that episode 28 happens in February, which has 28 days, right? This isn't a leap year, right? No. In any case, this is The Consulog episode 28, the week of February 19th through the 25th. One of my favorite weeks this past week, because this was the only week that I experienced this past week. But enough about me. Let me tell you about what you need to know about In The News, now. First big thing of the week is Webpack 4. Dude, I'm just really excited. I was just gonna say that. Can I get on yeah, with the show? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. All okay, right. bye. How rude was that guy? Yes, Webpack 4 came out final this past week. Very exciting. Love Webpack. I couldn't make an application without it. No, I really couldn't. I mean, I could, but it just wouldn't be fun. If I had to have a theme for Webpack 4, it would definitely be Webpack Team is definitely paying down some tech debt, both in terms of technology, but also in terms of the mindshare that they've been kind of dealing with the past couple of months where people are saying that Webpack is too hard. And one of the big things that they've been focusing on in total is making Webpack even easier to get started with, which is definitely very exciting because the easier that tools can become means that more people can then become application engineers and everybody profits from that. The way that they've actually made Webpack a little bit easier is they've done two really awesome things. One is they actually have now better defaults built into Webpack 4, meaning that you can actually get Webpack 4 installed in your node modules and then just make a source slash index file and you are off to the races and you're ready to go. No Webpack configuration file needed at all. The other big thing is that there is now a new property that you can add to your Webpack file called mode. And what's awesome about this is there is two modes so far. There's development and production. And I'm sure you've done this before in your applications as well, but one is made for development and one is made for production. All that being said, Webpack 4 is now probably the easiest version of Webpack ever made. So if you have never used Webpack before, this is a great time to start. If you already do use Webpack 4, they've actually done a great job of making the common chunks, what's it called? Common chunks plugin now is actually gone and just built right into Webpack itself, meaning that making async chunks that you can load later in the browser is going to be easier for you as an application engineer. I have a Webpack 3 application right now that I need to upgrade to Webpack 4. I'm not worried about it too much. It's going to definitely be worth the pain to upgrade when I do. So very excited about Webpack 4. It's here. I love new things. Speaking of new things that I love. NPM came out this past week with a new version 5.7.1. <laughs> One of the coolest new things about NPM 5.7.1 is that it has a new tool called NPM CI built expressly for usage in CI environments like Jenkins or Travis. It's purpose is to make sure that you can install your new modules as fast as possible so that you can run your test on the C environment when you want to. Another very cool feature of NPM 5.7.1 is that it will now resolve package lock, blah, 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 package lock conflicts for you without you having to worry about it yourself. If you've ever done a package lock conflict and had to manage fixing it yourself, you'll know the pain of that. So now that it can be automated is awesome. I believe this already exists in Yarn, so to have this be in parity, this feature to be both the same, very cool. NPM 5.7.1 coming to a node modules near you soon. Sweet. In the world of Flow, not the wave type, the, the, the JavaScript uh, Facebook thing. Yeah, that's right. Flow, the static type checker for your JavaScript from Facebook, has released a new version, 0.66, and one of the more key features of 0.66 is better error messages for your Flow JavaScript files. If you've used Flow in the past, you'll know that Flow's error messages can be a little bit oblique, a little bit hard to understand what is actually going wrong. But with 0.66, they have now fixed this issue and made it actually a little bit more human readable for you to actually get to understand what went wrong and how to fix it. Because at the end of the day, that's all you want to do. If you, don't, if you already use Flow, I would definitely recommend upgrading because you will now have a better time figuring out why your static types are being a little bit more staticky than usual. Is that even a thing you can say? And last but not least, we have the world of Angular. In the past week, we had uh, NG Atlanta, which is a conference for Angular, the framework. And there's a few announcements there. That there's a blog post you can read about that. But the most exciting thing that I think you should definitely be uh, aware of is the introduction and announcement of a 
in development ren new renderer for Angular called Angular Ivy. The Angular Ivy renderer has a few explicit goals that they're trying to fix with the Angular framework. Uh, one is for it to be smaller. They actually had a tweet that a Hello World Angular application rendered with Ivy was compiled down to 3.2 kilobytes, which is amazing because if you've made an Angular application in the past, you'll know that they can be quite large by default and having Ivy strip away all that extraneous things is really cool. Uh, easier to debug, cool. Faster compilation, also really cool. And last but not least, the thing that I think is even, uh, the thing that is most impressive and, and most best is that it is going to have no breaking changes. That means if you stay up to date with Angular, at some point when Angular IV becomes stable, they'll just swap it in there and you'll get all these benefits for free. If you think about Angular IV, Angular IV is kind of similar to what React Fiber was to React, where it's a new renderer on, uh, inside of the framework that if you just stay up to date, you get all the advantages for free. So this is still in development. There is a GitHub issue where you can track the progress of the Angular IV renderer project. And I definitely encourage you to do so because this is really, really, really neat. And that was the console log. I hope you have learned, why is this? accent from. And that is the news for the past week of JavaScript and the web. I hope you have learned a few things that you did not know already. If you are not already a subscriber, please do subscribe down below so you can keep up to date with all future console log episodes and JavaScript and the web in total. <laughs> and I will keep coding if you keep coding. And when we stop coding, we'll come back together next week to actually talk about some more things that happened in the past week while we coded. This has been the console log episode 28. Catch you again next week. Bye-bye.